of history court okay well thank you so much for for coming on and um having looking at this new training that i've just created so i'm really excited to share this to you today so one of the most important skills to cultivate in improving communication is deepening the relationship is heart-centered listening so who would love to feel um so going yep who would love um would you love to feel more connected to your customers you can answer this ladies you're both on mute <laughs> i can't hear nodding or <laughs> so yes, yes. yes. <laughs> who here would like to feel as though they are helping their customers through the customer advocacy and the journey faster Hands up, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> who would love an extra tool to help grow their business by achieving outcomes more quickly? Definitely, yeah. yeah, definite, isn't it? Yeah. So, although the art of listening um, is easy to learn, it seems very few of us have actually learnt it well. Perhaps one reason for this um, circumstance is that many of us believe that we listen well, when in fact, rather than being present and listening um, from our hearts, we're busy thinking about what's going, what we're going to say next, um, or thinking about other things when you're actually talking to customers. So heart-centered listening can be a profound experience for both um, yourself and the listener. You know, so people yearn to be truly heard. So heart-centered listening is an experience of acceptance and connection for people we feel to feel heard and loved. So listening happens at it happens at four specific levels. So an obvious one is listening for facts or information. Okay. In general. Sorry, Ralph, sorry yep. to cut in. Yeah. What slide? we be on because it's just on the first one again yeah that's that's where i want it to be just at this you know yeah no, that's all right <laughs> yeah um so an obvious one is listening for facts and information okay so in general this is listening at the content level so content um, information is only a small part of most messages communicated to us at one time um, all of us do this daily without even realising and when we're asked upon reflection, how easily can this information be misunderstood or miscommunicated? Um, you know, they occur on this very basic level. So that's where we need to make sure that we're, you know, we're listening with our, you know, with our heart. A second way of listening often involves the energy of how something is said or the tonality um, of the communication flow. So tonality is the manner of the expression or the mood um, in which a person articulates that information. And the third aspect of listening is that of a mean of meanings. Um, so this involves setting our intention to not only listen to what is said, um, but also glean um, the more elusive or deeper levelling leveling of what it's meaning um, or what's meant. So listening to a person while centering your awareness in your heart and giving a person your complete attention um, enables us to better hear. We gain a deeper understanding of it, of it and put greater importance on what a person may be sharing with us at a given time. And the lastly, the fourth level of listening involves that person. So really seeing them and listening and attending to what um, the ear of your heart. So that's that's what you need to, um, you know, really listen to what they've actually said. When we attend to others in a caring and receptive way, what happens? Um, oh, bloody hell. My Bixby started talking to me. <laughs> um, what happens is the content being shared, the person listened to feels that you're caring about them and has understood them and um, what level that they're on. So when a person feels cared for and understood, more likely they will want to spend more time talking to you. So, um, so that was all those questions. So who already knows that phone call recipes are the, the key to your success? Yep, nods there. 
Has anyone got any great stories to share about the young outcomes of your customers? You know, are there any stories that you've been, um, you know, that you, you, you're wanting to share about some of your customers? Some of those, you know, it could be just recent or it could be in the past. Can't hear you, Melissa. <laughs> No, no, no stories. No stories. No <laughs> Nothing stories. comes to mind when you're talking to your customers and how good they feel. You know how good. You know how excited they are when you get. You know you're delivering and you're doing that follow-up phone call. Um, how you've changed their world. Yeah, it just makes it feel good. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Now this is um, listen to understand and not to be understand. So first, first seek to understand, then be understood. I love this. Effective listening is not simply echoing what the other person has said through the lens of one's own experience. So rather it is putting yourself in the perspective of the customer, listening empathetically for both feeling and meaning. If you want to interact effectively with me, to influence me, first you need to understand me, okay? So you have to build this, the skills of empathetic listening on a base of um, character to inspire openness and trust. All right, so heart-centered listening is seeking to understand what the other is saying. So it's about following another person as they speak in order to understand their true deeper meaning. So it's about allowing yourself to hear the message that may be beneath those literal words. Um, you know, what do you think of when we say heart-centered listening? I think it's like really listening to what people are saying so that when you're ready to respond, um, you do come from a place of caring yep. and understanding and everything like that. Yep. Um, the thing too is you, I think you need to actually take a step back when you're actually listening to someone and listen to what they said and pause on it. You know, don't come back too quickly with something. Um, you need, need to really reflect on what they've actually said and not have a rehearsed, rehearsed thing in your head. Um, why would you benefit from this? What are the benefits? Hi, Paige. <laughs> no one's got anything? Why would you benefit from having having um, built a rapport with the customer? Because it's definitely then a better relationship and the better relationship that you have means the more customers you'll end up with because it's that single ripple drop. They'll just keep telling their friends how great you are. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's all, yeah, that's right. It's about that referral, isn't it? Um, you know, and it can be on different levels. It's not about sales also. It can be on a bigger level of communicating um, with your customers, um, recommending recipes, um, your knowledge that you've got. You know, um, it could be on food. It could be on allergies, intolerances, whatever it is. If you've got that, you know, building that rapport with the customers, they're more likely to, you know, recommend you then. Why would your customers benefit from this also? They'll get better use out of their machine and the more they use it, the more they will tell their friends. Yeah, yeah definitely. So what are the intentions of heart-centred listening? So we're listening in a caring zone and it's the attitude of willingness. So it's from a place of service. So service is an expression that we use by contributing to the well-being of others, you know. With the intent to serve, we focus on giving rather than receiving. So it is all about the customer and what their needs are and what, you know, they're wanting. Um, all right. Okay, heart-centered listening is, we like, I like to use this um, acronym. So feel free to actually just take a screenshot of this if you want to. 
but it is about love, you know, listen attentive and focused present for the person speaking. So really be present. So if you've got those, if the kids in the background screaming and, you know, uh, you know, punching each other up like my boys were just before, um, you know, really just be present. Make sure that you can lock your door or whatever you need to do. Go and have a coffee somewhere, you know, but just really be present to that person that's speaking, you know, where possible also. Um, the O is to observe. Um, note the tone and the emotions and the body language. So pay attention to the energy of speech. It's uh, it, it's amazing how you can actually um, notice a big drop, you know, um, in a customer, you know, when they've returned your call and they don't know who you are and you say, oh, it's Roxy from Thermix the next minute. Oh, oh, and you can hear that tone, can't you? You know, that, that drop. Um, but then when, you know, you pick up the language, like I was just touching base with you, to, you know, I know you've had your machine for a month or, you know, just to see where you're at at the moment um, and striking up a conversation by the end of it, they're back in love with you, <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, it, it's a great way to actually, um, you know, find out exactly where they're at the phone calls, you know, with their um, the tone. The V is to verify the feedback of what you hear. Check your perspective. Um, perspective yeah, can't even speak these braces. <laughs> Perceptions. Um, clarify the meaning of the words and the phrases. So, you know, make sure that you've really understood them and, and clarify it with them. And the E is empathise, appreciate their position, support them in being fully heard and come from the heart. So, you know, it can be about that sale, it can be about a service inquiry, it can be anything, you know. I mean, ultimately you want to, you know, support them in where they're at and meet them at the moment. Now I'm going to play a couple of video, a couple of sounds to you. So these are phone calls that... Um, Tess and Julianne have put together, and I'm not sure if you've heard them yet, but I I'm, I'm, think I'm sneaking something in. <laughs> no, you should play on me then. Oh, good. Hey, I'm in a meeting. Is, can you not hear that, guys? No. Okay. All right. Well, I will put the links up. That obviously didn't work because I can hear it going really nicely through my sound. <laughs> <laughs> the technicality. Sorry. Thanks for letting me know, Narissa. <laughs> so I didn't. This is another blooper training session. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So this is some work for you. <laughs> um, I want you to uh, work out. I want you to come up with ten customers' names and what your intention is of the call. Um, and how can you use love in your business? 
how we incorporate these values. So have you got a list already? Um, and I'd like some feedback. Um, how are you going? Because we're in our, our telethon at the moment. How are you going with um, making your phone calls? Have you been able to come up with your list of 20? Or have you been able to make um, at least 10 phone calls? We've got crickets out there. No one's answering me. <laughs> Are we struggling to come up with a list of names? Is that... You're on mute, Narissa. Oh, good. I was looking for a pen. <laughs> um, Thanks. This is just giving me one that doesn't work, so that's going to help well. Um, yeah, I've got... Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, I've got a few customers here that I need to call already on my list. And then there's... Um, I've got three EOIs on my list as well that I need to... Add. Actually, not it. I've got more than that. One, two, three, four, five, six EOIs. Um, awesome. And customers. Yeah. Well done. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Paige, what about yourself? How are you going with your phone calls, you know, and, and getting a list together for, for coming up with um, some names of people to call and, and the intention of your call? Um, I'm just doing um, follow-up from December 1st and yep. following up with groups that just haven't gone to the next stage as well. Yep. Um, just reconnecting with all of them and um, just trying to book lots of demos. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you guys, but quite a, quite a, around in this area, we found it too hot and we had quite a lot of cancellations. So um, just trying to reschedule those ones as well as well because yeah. they genuinely want to have a demo. It was just too hot. Yeah. So, yeah, Queensland's been horrible, hasn't it, lately, you know, with yeah. with that. So, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that, Paige. Yeah. You're right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd like you to come up with the 10 names and what's your intention. Really have the intention. So, Paige, it sounds like, you know, you're going to offer them the host rewards, you know, because they're people that are purchased in December, um, you know, and and have that in front of mind you know, when you're um, offering those host rewards. Now, befriend your inner critic, okay? So your mental attitude is something that you can control outright and you must have self-discipline until you create a positive mental attitude. So your mental attitude attracts to you everything that makes you what you are. I love this quote. I think it's, it's so strong and powerful and that's by Napoleon Hill. So the other pro proverb that we've got is an African one. So when there is no enemy within, the enemy um, without can do you no harm. So the calling, remember the calling isn't about you. It is about how you are positively contributing to the conversation. So really make sure that you're actually... Um, you know, if you know you don't like that phone call, you know that you've got that critic sitting there, just pick up the phone. You know, remember you're offering the customer a service. They they're wanting to hear from you. All right. So state your intent after the initial pleasantries. Describe why you've called and what you hope the outcome will be. For example, I'm calling for two reasons. Firstly, I would like to check in to see how you were going with your thermix or if you've had any questions about the Thermix. And second, I'd like to share with you our new lunchbox workshop, our cooking experience and our host reward. You know, that's a great opening conversation that you can actually have with them. Remember, make it about them. So the slightest talk of me talk, it triggers the flight mechanism. So if it's all about me and what I do, I'm doing, I, I do this, this, this and this, then they're going to think, well, you're not really listening to me. You're not really relating to me. So it needs to be about them. Do your homework before your call. Go back over your guest feedback forms and have that really in, in front of mind. And like I said, have that intention. 
come up with a script about them you know what it is that you're going to say about you know ask the questions make sure that you open have open questions ask things like you know what would you like your next step in your journey to be um, work on the benefit to them and seek permission to you know to share that with them and lastly is practice 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 the script you know um, the more you get into doing that it will become a lot um, free form and and flow a lot easier the next that um, I only got two more slides to go so heart-centered what is going to set you apart so no two businesses are the same what is it that sets you apart from everyone else you know um is it customer service is it you know what is it that you're doing um that will set you apart Paige, i think i've actually watched a couple of videos of yours would i have seen you doing a um do you do videos where you put up um uh what's those spanish donut things churros churros no that wasn't you Paige. no i thought it was you <laughs> um so that sets you apart you know doing things like that facebook live whatever it is you know um really think you know outside the box also you must take time to establish the system of habits to make the reorder process as automatic as possible. And great customer service is one of the best ways to build lasting relationships and income from your database. Because as you know, we want to have those referrals. So when you place an emphasis on your service and exceed the expectations of others, you will find that the extra efforts lead to an abundance of lasting benefits. Now I'm going to just show a bit, of, share a little bit of a um, survey, survey that was conducted with customers who purchase products through a group of um, demonstration or a one-on-one. -on -one. And they revealed that if they have not heard from their direct selling representative within four months, it was assumed that that individual no longer was no longer with the company or representing that particular product. So in fact, with these responses indicate is that the general public views direct sales as transient okay a group of individuals that may or may not be there to service them so when it comes to time to order additional products or addition anything you know how do they know that you're still in the business if you're not contacting them or you know and that could be via email it could be through text messages or phone calls you know how can you conduct yourself in a way that keeps um, you in the heart and the minds of your customers Okay. Um, direct sales is a relationship business. So because it's consistently individualized, attention is something your customers do not receive when shopping in department store or online. So they will appreciate your interest and reward you with the repeat business and the referral. Now, I'm going to see if this works, but I've got a video. And tell me if this is working, Marissa. I think we all need a pep talk. The world needs you to stop being boring. Yeah, you. Boring is easy. Everybody can be boring, but you're gooder than that. Life is not a game, people. Life isn't a cereal either. Well, it is a cereal. And if life is a game, aren't we all on the same team? I mean, really, right? I'm on your team, be on my team. This is life, people. You got air coming through your nose. You got heartbeat. That means it's time to do something. A poem. Two roads diverged in the woods, and I took the road less traveled. And it hurt, man! Really bad. Rocks, thorns, and glass. My pants broke. Wah! Not cool, Robert Frost. But what if there really were two paths? I won't be in the one that leads to awesome. It's like that dude Journey said, don't stop believing unless you dream stupid. Then you should get a better dream. I think that's how it goes. Get a better dream and keep going. Keep going, keep going, and keep going. 
Well, Michael Jordan have quit. Well, he did quit. No, he retired. Yeah, yes, he retired. But before that, in high school, what if he quit when he didn't make the team? He would have never made Space Jam. And I love Space Jam. What will be your Space Jam? What will you create will make the world awesome? Nothing if you keep sitting there. That's why I'm talking to you today. This is your time. This is my time. It's our time. We can. Ah! I think we all need a pep talk. <laughs> Sorry, where did that go? Hey, God. something that will make the world awesome. Play ball. Play ball. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. We're all working hard to make this. All right, that's the end of it. So I love that, that video. I think kid, kid president's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's just a very simple message, isn't it? So, um, so how are you going with your list of 10? Have we been working on it while we've been doing this? I'm mute, everyone. <laughs> Any questions? Any anything else you'd like to add? No. 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 Okay. Well, thank you all so much for taking the time to jump on. Um, I know it's you know um, hard on a Friday afternoon at three thirty. I'd um, but enjoy it. Enjoy the. We're halfway through the um, telethon. Um, you know. I'd love to see your results up on the on the page. Um, how you're going? You know what you're doing. Let your team leader know. Um, but it's really exciting to have you here. So thank you so much, and enjoy your weekend. Thanks, Roxy. No worries. Hang on, I've got to stop recording. <laughs>